Welcome to my channel. My name is Nikki. Thank you for stopping by. Tonight we're going to be working on a 15 by 30 canvas. I've never done a canvas this size, so I'm excited to do it. But um, it looks like it's cut off, but it's not. It's to the very edge. The um, the camera is to the very edges, so you're going to see the whole piece. It's just no wiggle room. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you. This is the um, it's the artist series archival quality 15 by 30 stretch canvas these come from joanne's so um that's where i purchased this i don't know how much it was i can't remember i've had it in my stash for a little while but tonight we're going to do an all green um color palette i did a all blue color palette and i love that piece i love how it turned out and so i was like well let's do an all green um i'm also gonna use some satin enamels in the pure white and i'm gonna throw in a gold um not the 24 karat gold <laughs> i'm gonna surprise you and use something else um but i'm using the deco art americana decor metallics this is in the color soft gold so that's the gold I'm going to be using. I also have another metallic from that range. And that is in the color Emerald. This is a new color for me. And I'm excited to use it. I have the um, Art Minds Brush Metallic in Peridot. This is the only non-deco art one I used. I try to stick all with deco art just because, I don't know, I was in the mood. But I wanted that metallic. So there you go. This is the Decor Americana Premium Acrylic Paint. This is in Viridian Green Hue. I'm not sure if they discontinue that line or if they're just repackaging it. Um, I got these on clearance at Michael's a few weeks ago. This is in the color Sap Green. Thalo Green Yellow. Thalo Green Blue. So quite similar and then yellow green light and i also have mixed up some of i said the um pure white satin enamels i used the bayer um interior um satin well now my now my um my, the, my paint runoff is um messed up the name i can't read it but it's the um it's the indoor outdoor um, house paint. This was just a little sample size. That I like to buy them in the sample size instead of those big old containers. So I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to think how I'm going to do this. It's I don't want it to be like a traveling ring pour down here. I just want it to be um, pours. So I think I'm going to prepare three different cups. Um, and I hope I have enough paint. And I do want to layer them in the same manner because I want, I don't want them to look like three separate pores. I want it to be um, very cohesive. So I'm going to start by putting in some of the satin enamel mixture. And these paints are not thick. Um, they're just a really nice fluid consistency. And I guess let's just start layering. I'm going to try to go darkest to lightest. Because I have so many colors, um, I don't want to put too much in at one time. And I don't expect to have very many layers of, like multiple layers of these color sets. Um, in fact, I'll probably use them all in one go so um there's that one and then let's put some hmm, let's put some of the peridot in because the non-metallics are quite similar tonally a couple of them are um i want to layer some brighter color between them all right so let's go now with some of this i can't remember which one it is uh, it's one of the thalos though and i forgot 
to tell you guys my um, pore medium is um, the Liquitex Professionals Pore Medium. And I added some GAC 800 to it. And then um, I just used water, distilled water, to thin it the rest of the way. So um, that's, I know, quite unusual for me. I don't normally um, do that. I normally use my own pore medium and just add a little bit of the Liquitex. But I was, I don't know, my head is not in, in the right place tonight, I guess. I have. I got back. I got back a grade on one of my projects that I was not happy with at all um but it is what it is it just got me you know one one bad thing can just kind of put you in that whoa place i'm gonna use the soft actually you know let's put some more of the um satin enamel in not a, not a lot just a little anyway I said I gotta get home and go paint something because right now I don't feel like I'm very good at anything <laughs> and I need to do something I'm good at. <laughs> and then let's see. Oh, tomorrow I have to go to a. I don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm going to a funeral. Um. It's. Mm, what's a bad situation so which is actually something um i think is worth talking about if you've not watched any of my videos or you haven't seen any of my older videos um i've been paint pouring for about a year now and the reason i started paint pouring was because um, I was just experiencing some really um, traumatic things and I was having very bad anxiety um, issues. I was having panic attacks um, to the point of I was on three different types of medication to deal with anxiety. I had to take medication because I was having panic attacks in my sleep. And it's one of the scariest feelings in the world when you wake up and you literally cannot move. Your body is paralyzed. Um, and it's not, it's not for any medical reason and i'm putting that in quotation because um it's i just think that's it's I, i'm not minimizing this problem is what i'm saying but there's no there you can't look at your body and say this is what's causing these issues right it's it's something above your shoulders and in your in your body's just reacting um, it's very scary as the person who is experiencing these issues, but it's also very scary for the people in your life who don't understand these issues. Um, and a lot of times the knee jerk reaction is to disassociate from the person who's experiencing these um, issues because we're afraid of things that we don't understand and um, I can tell you that is one of the most harmful things that can happen to a person who are who is experiencing mental health issues um, because one of the things that really gives you comfort is consistency and Knowing that the people that you depend on for emotional support are going to be there for you. And so, 
while I understand why people leave when they, you know, when they begin to see their loved ones experience these things, it's out of fear and confusion. It's, if you can try to understand, um, it's way better for that person. And it's okay if you have, if you have an intimate relationship, and I don't mean sexual, I mean a closeness. If you have an intimate relationship with someone who experiences mental health issues and you're comfortable, if you just sit and have a conversation with them and, and they are able to explain to you what, what they're feeling and, you know, they can't necessarily explain why they feel this way because it's not always black and white. Um, but to at least understand what they're feeling and why sometimes their body reacts the way it reacts, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, and yeah, it's just, if, if you are, um, a person who is dealing with mental health issues, um, you don't have to be tough. You don't have to like pretend like everything is okay. That's there's this huge stigma associated with mental health issues. Having mental health issues does not make you crazy. Okay? And that's I know that's like a little bit rough around the edges to say it like that, but that's really um a perception that gets people People just are like, I can't say I'm having mental health problems because then I'm going to be labeled as this crazy person. No, you're not crazy. It's just, you're, sometimes the chemicals in your body get off and these things happen and it's not anybody's fault that, that these things happen to them. You can't control what, what your body is doing, you know, you can't control the chemical process in your brain. Um... And you might be thinking, Nick, why are you going off on this tangent about mental health? Well, a lot of times people who start to experience mental health issues and they become alienated from, you know, their friends and family, either if they choose to alienate themselves or friends and family choose to step away. Um, sometimes those people turn to suicide and it's, I, I once heard that this quote that said that that is a permanent solution to temporary problems. And it's very true. Um, things do get better. It's not always going to be this way. Um, and there's, there's so much information available and there is nothing wrong with having to take medication for mental health issues. If, if taking medication helps you be okay and be normal and live a beautiful life, then take your medication. I learned that the, the hard way. Like, at first, I didn't want to have to take medicine because I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a strong person. I have a strong will. I have a strong mind. I'm tough enough that I can deal with this on my own. And the truth is, I couldn't. And it didn't make me a weak person. It just made me human. Um, and, yeah. Right now, I'm a little bit emotional because um, that's why I'm having to go to a funeral tomorrow. Is because someone that I cared about um, was dealing with mental health issues. And... Um, they, they, they were with that strong type A personality that says I can handle my own problems and I don't need help and I don't need to talk to anybody. And they internalized that conflict and those feelings and they didn't get help and they made a decision and the people they left behind are heartbroken now so I just wanted to take a moment to say um, you know there's there's nothing wrong with getting help and there's nothing wrong with saying I'm not okay um, and if you have 
any of those feelings, I'm going to put information in my description box, um, phone numbers, website, um, so that if you're feeling that way, or if you know someone that you think might be considering taking that action, that um, just reach out and, and talk, get help. Because it will get better. It really will. And I know I'm, I'm being quite solemn and serious, but it's, um, you know, it, it matters. People matter, even if I don't. Even if I don't know your name or I never meet you, you matter. Um, and just don't make a permanent decision about things that you can get help with. But I'm sorry for getting deep and heavy on y'all, but it's just really, um, it's just really affected me. Um, and I'm, I've just been really down about it, but... It's going to, I mean, we have to keep on living. And so that is what we're going to do. Um, this, is this, this color palette, I'm, I'm just kind of amazed at what this is doing. It's so beautiful. I feel like I want to mix up some more satin enamel to go on the outside um, because I don't want to lose all this. So, okay, so let's put this down around just to help with the flow so I don't lose so much of that beautiful green. This is fantastic. I'm going to wait to put it on this side. Alright, so let's move this over here. Let's start bringing it. I hope this stays in frame well enough for you guys. Maybe one day I'll have this huge art studio and you know I can't complain about the size of my art um, my space that I have it's, it's it's more than what a lot of people have I know that um, and in all honesty I if I just had a better um, better like mounting thing um, for my camera I probably would not even have the issue um, I have with the, um, the counter space. The counter space is big enough. It's just, I can't get my camera up. Oh, I'm sorry for bumping you. Um, I can't get my counter up, my camera up high enough that it, um, you know, that it'll encompass such large space. So I'm just... I don't need a new room. I don't need a new counter. I just need a better way to mount my camera. Which my brother found me this thing that I'm using now. And it's way better than the one I had started off with. Um, and little by little, I'm getting more, um, you know, I'm getting more to um, help me hopefully create better content for you guys. Um, just more lights and this and that. So, ooh, come back, Nelly, come back. Boy, I have made a mess, haven't I? Oh, geez. It's okay. It's totally worth it. Okay, let's put you back. Y'all, look at that. You can't tell me nothing. Okay? <laughs> oh, you? I am... Woo, woo, woo. I am very happy with this. Wow. 
Okay, let's torch it. Okay, so mental note, um, use house paint instead of um, acrylic paint for now on to, to thin my um, satin enamels because, baby, this is showing out. This satin enamel is like, I'm here. The party can begin. Y'all. I can't believe I made this. I was thinking, oh goodness, I'm going to mess up this big old canvas. And I don't think I got it on sale either. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to mess up this big old canvas. But no. No, I did not. I did not. This is thin tabulous. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think this is the happiest I've been in <laughs> for ages. Okay. I'm not touching this no more. I'm not moving this no more. I've already I felt the weight when I put it down. The weight is good. Um, I think these paints are thin enough. I don't have to worry about any cracking. So let's take you down. Give you some close-ups. Look at that. This is why we call satin enamel cloud pores. Because they make those pillow-like cells. If you've never used satin enamel, it does have a learning curve. I will tell you that. Um, but the, once you get it, it, it is incredible what you can create with it. It's just beautiful. I'm going to have to step far back for you to see all of that. But, well, y'all, I'm sorry my hands are shaking. Um, this is incredible. I'm so happy with this. I am. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you didn't mind my serious talk. But sometimes um, I just think it's important to talk about issues that people, um, you know, that might be affecting people. Um, and just to remind you that you're important um, and you matter. And, yeah, the world needs you. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope you have a great day. And I will speak to you all very soon. Bye.